We know an awful lot about life on this planet, but what if there's also life in this planet? I don't mean like soil microbes. I mean like, what if there's a big empty space in the center of the earth and there's people there or something? What, that, would be, that would be pretty cool, right? That, well, don't get too excited. Here are five empty things about the hollow earth. Number one, it's rooted in ancient myth and legend. The idea that the planet Earth is hollow and there are people living inside it is an old one. Even before modern hollow Earth theories were first proposed, many religions taught of subterranean realms that were domains of the dead. This makes a strange kind of sense. When someone dies, we usually bury them. It doesn't take all that much creativity to imagine that the afterlife also takes place beneath the ground. Greek mythology depicted a vast underworld with many different regions, each one populated by souls sent there according to how they lived their lives. Elysium for the honored dead, the dark abyss of Tartarus for the damned, and the Asphodel meadows for people who were just sort of okay. Some modern religious people have beliefs that include a literal subterranean hell, but today when people talk about believing in a hollow earth, they're usually talking about something a little different. Eventually, it was no longer found just in religion and folklore. Number two, it reemerged as pseudoscientific speculation. During the scientific revolution that began in the 16th century, some of the world's most brilliant minds proposed their own theories of a hollow Earth. The great astronomer Edmund Halley proposed that Earth was not merely a single hollow shell, but contained two smaller concentric hollow shells, and each realm in between the shells had its own atmosphere and magnetic poles and rotated at its own rate. It was the age of discovery, and there was still enough yet undiscovered about the internal structure of Earth that theories like Halley's, which seem far-fetched to us today, were tantalizingly plausible. That's probably why there isn't one single hollow Earth theory, but number three, it takes a variety of equally preposterous forms. Halley's concentric shells theory is pretty kooky, but there are others. Oh, buddy, there are others. My personal favorite is the concave Earth theory, which says that not only is Earth hollow, but we're actually inside it right now, living on the interior surface. According to this theory, the sun, the stars, the entire observable universe actually exists within the shell of the hollow Earth. <laughs> Just think about how much modern science would have to have gotten completely wrong for that to be even remotely true. One of the most well-known variations was proposed in the 19th century by John Cleves Sims Jr. While Halley's theory had two concentric shells within the Earth, Sims did him one better and proposed four. He also believed that there were openings at the north and south poles of each shell, providing access up and down to the other layers. Sims lobbied Congress to sponsor an expedition to the North Pole to locate the entrance to the lower sphere. Congress said no, but President John Quincy Adams was supportive of the idea, though it's not clear if Adams found Sims' hollow earth theory credible, or if he was intrigued by the prospect of a journey to the North Pole, or if he just wanted to give the finger to Congress, also a very real possibility. Sims never got to undertake his expedition to the North Pole, but the North and South Poles were eventually visited by many explorers, none of whom ever found any entrances to the planet's hollow interior. But that's not the only strike against hollow Earth theory. Number four, it's directly contradicted by scientific observation. When the first nominally scientific hollow earth theories began appearing in the 17th and 18th centuries, we knew very little about what earth was like beneath the surface. So we can forgive brilliant people like Halley for proposing theories that today we would consider obviously wrong. By the time of Sims, it was a lot less forgivable. The thing is, the planet earth is not hollow. It's no longer up for debate. 
We've never drilled a hole all the way through to prove it, but we have taken seismic readings that tell us that beneath the solid crust, Earth contains a thick layer of magma, and beneath that, a two-layer core of molten iron and nickel. No vast subterranean realms, no secret underground civilizations, no hollow Earth. That's just a fact. It would also be impossible for an object the size of Earth to have as strong of a gravitational pull as it has were it hollow inside. And there's no scientifically accepted theory of planetary formation that can explain how a hollow sphere the size of Earth could have formed in the first place. Earth isn't hollow. <laughs> if you believe that it is, you're wrong. That's just it. Hollow Earth theory is bogus. And yet, number five, it's still promoted by modern conspiracy theorists. Despite being demonstrably false, hollow earth theories are still accepted by some people. Not many people, thankfully, but probably more than you might expect, thanks to the proliferation of conspiracy theorist videos and websites. Some believe they've located the entrance to Earth's inner world on Google Earth. I guess the rest of us, including the entire scientific community, just missed it. Some believe there's a hole in Washington state leading down there. Though, despite 20 years of rumors and urban legends, there's no evidence that Mel's Hole, as it's called, even exists. Some still combine the hollow earth hypothesis with the concept of hell, such as those who believe a team of Russian engineers once drilled a hole so deep into Siberia that they could feel the heat of perdition's flames and hear the wailing of the damned. And while Russian engineers did drill a hole over nine miles deep, there have been no anguished screams or hellish temperatures reported. Modern hollow earth theorists aren't really so different from their counterparts in previous eras. Some of them hold their beliefs due to religious convictions, some due to misunderstandings of scientific principles, some due to what appears to be determined, willful ignorance. The main difference between today's hollow earth theorists and the likes of Halley and Sims are that today, they have no excuse. They should know better. And they could, if they really wanted to. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you got something out of this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron of this channel. Thanks for watching.